Early driver Maxine Wahome is being investigated for murder in the case in which she's accused of killing her partner and fellow rally driver Asad Khan. Maxine Marigo Wahome was born on 21st December 1995 to Beverly and Jimmy Wahome. Maxine came from a family of petrol heads with Jimmy, her father, being a renowned rally driver, and her cousin Jeremy Wahome holding the title of motocross champion in Kenya. Consequently, Maxine's exposure to motorsports began at a young age of 10 years old fostering a love for the exciting world of racing. In 2015, at the age of 20, Maxine eventually got into motocross competitions, riding her way into local events with a passion for breaking gender glass ceilings existing in the field. It was around 2017, at the age of 22, that she encountered the legendary 45-year-old Asad Khan, a safari rally driver on the Nairobi autocross circuit. Asad became Maxine's mentor, guiding her transition from motocross to safari rally competitions in 2020. They even shared a racing car before Maxine acquired her own. However, two years later, their union would end tragically with Asad deceased and Maxine behind bars. Welcome to Silent Shadows. As always, if you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our bi weekly series by liking and subscribing. Together, we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well-balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. Despite her devotion to racing, Maxine did not neglect her educational journey. She graduated with a Bachelor of Education Studies from Catholic University and in 2021 joined STEM International School where she took on the role of teaching kindergarten students. Beyond the ABCs, Maxine continued to raise the Kenyan flag high in auto racing, her pinnacle moment came in March 2022 when she triumphed in the inaugural Lioness All-Women's Rally at Kasarani. Continuing her winning streak, in June the same year, Maxine became the first Kenyan female driver to secure a victory in the World Rally Championships 3. Maxine's success not only showcased her driving prowess, but also marked a historic moment for women in the sport. Undeterred by initial wins, Maxine continued to make her mark on the auto racing landscape, participating in iconic events like the World Rally Championship competitions in Voi, Machakos, and Ramisi. With each rally, Maxine fiercely competed, proudly raising the Kenyan flag on both national and international stages. Recognizing her exceptional talent and charisma, corporate giants like Safaricom, Betika, and Hako Industries eagerly endorsed Maxine solidifying her status as a trailblazer and inspiring a new era for women in the world of safari rally in Kenya. On the other hand, Asad Khan, also known as Kalulu, was also passionate about auto racing. Born on 23rd October 1972, he was a decorated safari rally driver who began racing competitively in the 90s. Despite a failed marriage that led to his wife leaving Kenya, Asad in 2020 found love with 25-year-old Maxine. The two moved in together at Preston Court on Oloitoktok Road in Kilimani in April of 2021, further cementing their relationship. The two even shared their relationship with their fans as seen on 16th August 2022 when Asad posted a photo on Instagram holding hands with Maxine, both wearing matching wristbands with Kenyan flag colors. To reaffirm their love, Maxine responded to Asad's post with two love hearts. Tragically, this marked the last post Asad made about their relationship, as events following this post would cost Asad's life and cut short Maxine's flourishing career. On 11th December 2022, Maxine alleges that she left their house at Preston Court at around 10pm to meet friends and attend a concert at the Museums of Kenya. After a night of festivities, she arrived home at 3am, took a shower and went to bed. The following day, December 12, 2022, around 7.30 a.m., she claims Asad violently woke her up, accusing her of spending the night with friends. A fight ensued and Maxine further alleges that she became alarmed when Asad threw a bottle at her and she ran out of the kitchen door seeking refuge on the balcony where she locked the kitchen door. She claims that Asad followed her and in a moment of anger and frustration, Asad kicked through the glass door breaking the glass and severely cutting his Achilles tendon. Following this, Asad began bleeding profusely as shown in these crime scene photos, and in panic, Maxine claims she called her mother Beverly Wahome for help before locking herself in one of the bedrooms in the house. During this period, Maxine and Asad's neighbors had the altercation and promptly went to their house with the intention of resolving the dispute. 
Samuel Kihanya, a neighbor and Assad's friend of 10 years, testified in court that upon reaching Maxine and Assad's house, he found Assad lying unresponsive in a pool of blood on the staircase. It looked like Assad had tried crawling from the house to seek help. Recognizing the urgency of Assad's condition, the neighbors rushed him to Nairobi Hospital, where he was admitted to the high dependency unit due to significant blood loss. Later the same day, 12 December 2023, Assad was transferred to the High Dependency Unit at Avenue Hospital in Nairobi by his family. Providing more details to reporters, Assad's younger brother, Dil, revealed the extent of Assad's injuries. He alleged that, besides the cut just above Assad's ankle from broken glass, he had a punctured right lung, visible head injuries, and scratch marks on his head and neck. Suspecting foul play, Adil reported Assad's assault at the Kilimani police station, leading the police to Maxine and Assad's apartment. Upon getting to the apartment, the police found Maxine in a visibly disturbed state. The police also noted the presence of alcohol and cut, aka Mira, on the table, suggesting Assad was intoxicated during the altercation. Additionally, they found a pool of blood in the dining room and staircase, broken window and door glass, and household items scattered around the house. Consequently, Maxine Wahome was arrested and detained at Kilimani Police Station for allegedly assaulting Assad Khan. However, she spent only two days in detention before being released on a Kenyan shillings 100,000 cash bill by Milimani Court Senior Principal Magistrate Bernard Ochoi, who cited finding no compelling reason to prolong her detention. The judge also declined the request by Maxine's lawyers to guard the media from covering the case, saying the claims that Maxine was guilty had not been proven. The attempt to guard media houses was allegedly an effort for Maxine to avoid tarnishing her name since she was an upcoming star in both the national and international safari rally circuit. On the other hand, the judge instructed the prosecution, investigators, Maxine and her legal team to reconvene in court on 12 January 2023 for further proceedings. Tragically, on the evening of Sunday, 18th December 2022, Assad Khan passed away at Avenue Hospital. Following an autopsy on Assad Khan's body, the post-mortem report by government pathologist Dr. Ndegwa outlined the cause of death as septicemia, an infection that happens when bacteria get into the bloodstream. For Assad, the septicemia was due to multiple injuries inflicted by both sharp and blunt force trauma during the incident with Maxine Wahome. Assad Khan was laid to rest at Karyoko Cemetery on Monday, 19 December 2022, as seen in this video. Unfortunately, Maxine did not attend Assad's burial, citing aggression and hostility from his family. A few weeks later, on 12 January 2023, the case was mentioned at the Milimani Law Courts. State Prosecutor James Gashoka informed the court the charges against Maxine had changed from aggravated assault to murder since Assad's passing. Prosecutor James Gashoka requested 14 days from the court to complete the investigations, which was granted by the judge. During this time, Maxine remained out on bond, with the court directing her to report weekly to the Kilimani police station. On 28 January 2023, investigators concluded their inquiry, and on 15 March 2023, Maxine was formally charged with Assad's murder. Despite pleading not guilty, Maxine was remanded to Langata Women's Prison pending further court proceedings. The ensuing court proceedings revealed the toxic nature of Maxine and Assad's relationship, with evidence suggesting Assad's history of violence towards Maxine and his previous partners. During her court appearance at Milimani Law Courts on 21st March 2023, Maxine disclosed that she was in an abusive, violent, and dehumanizing relationship with Assad Khan. She further stated there was financial abuse in the relationship, as Assad and his younger brother Adil would take her sponsorship money, leaving her broke. It is important to know that various people came out validating the fact that Maxine's and Assad's relationship was very toxic. One of their friends told reporters that in September 2022, together with Assad and Maxine, they had gone for the Rwanda Rally Championship and this was when they suspected that Assad was taking advantage of Maxine financially. Additionally, the friend noted that throughout the time they were in Rwanda, Assad and Maxine would have nasty fights openly.
The friend further asserted that it was an open secret that Assad was not comfortable with the attention Maxine was getting by being a star rally driver. A witness during the court hearings on 21st March 2023, Mr. Simon Kehanya, the chairman of the Preston Court Tenants Association and Assad's neighbor and friend for over 10 years, told the court that he knew Assad to have more than one girlfriend and be violent to all of them. Mr. Simon Kihanya added that he had witnessed the violence one time when they were having drinks at Assad's garage and at around 11 p.m. he started being verbally and physically abusive to one of the ladies who had joined them for drinks. Another neighbor, Chemutai Sogomo, who had been Assad's neighbor since 2013, testified that since Maxine moved in with Assad, they would often fight, sometimes even twice a week. On the day that Assad was injured, Chemutai recounted hearing a violent commotion with Assad shouting at Maxine for her to leave the house and Maxine crying. Chemutai also testified to having had glasses falling from the dining room window and hearing Assad groaning and Maxine crying out his name. Moments later, she saw blood trickling from the stairs. Chemutai, now terrified at what had happened, called the apartment guard identified as Hassan Oyugi, the police, and the Tenants House Association chairman, Mr. Simon Kihanya, to come and intervene. The neighbors, led by Mr. Simon Kihanya and the guard, went to Assad's house to assess the situation and found him badly injured. They then carried him downstairs and took him to hospital for treatment. Chemutai also told the court that she knew of six other relationships that Assad had been in. All of but one were short-lived and ended due to Assad's violent nature. For the one relationship that had lasted long, Chemutai told the court that it was because Assad had the child with a woman. Following the witnesses' statements, Maxine's lawyer, Philip Murgo, argued in court that it was evident Maxine was in an abusive relationship and that Assad hurt himself using broken glass during the altercation. Murgo also highlighted blood samples taken from Assad after the incident showed high alcohol levels in his system, suggesting Assad's judgment was impaired during the altercation and explaining why he bled profusely after injuring his Achilles tendon. Subsequently, on 30th March 2023, Maxine Wahome was released on a 2 million bond. Justice Lilian Mutende also directed Maxine to surrender her passport to the court and not travel out of the country without the court's permission. She was also instructed not to intermingle with her relatives who had been summoned by the prosecution as witnesses. During the next case hearing, which was on Friday 29th September 2023, the case was adjourned for eight months, with the expectation that it would resume around May 2024. During this time, Maxine moved in with her parents and siblings at their home. Unfortunately, her career stalled due to the murder charges, leading to her losing corporate sponsorships and being released from her deal with the World Rally Championship. The case involving Maxine and Assad is complex, given that there were no witnesses and dead men tell no tales. One thing is evident, their relationship was toxic and violent and the incident following Assad's death may have been an accident worsened by impaired judgment caused by alcohol and car tues. The case also highlights that gender-based violence affects both men and women. We truly hope that justice is served in this case and will keep you updated on the court proceedings as they continue. Our deepest condolences go out to the families and friends of Assad Khan and may he continue to rest in eternal peace. Thank you for joining us today and don't forget to subscribe to our channels for updates on the case. Until then, take care, stay safe and always trust your gut.